Hey guys, we are now just four months out from the 2022 midterm elections, and in this video, I will be updating my prediction for this year's Senate elections. I've been covering these elections for almost two years now, and right now I can tell you that the Democratic Party is in the best position they have been in to retain Senate control that they have been in for over a year. The last time the Democratic Party had this good of a chance in terms of retaining their Senate majority, you would have to go all the way back to the very beginning of Joe Biden's presidential term. So the Democratic Party, with the overturning of Roe v. Wade and the energization of the Democratic base, as well the nomination of so many bad candidates on the Republican side, the Democratic Party right now goes into these elections just four months out in a very strong position, much stronger than they were just a couple of months ago. So I'm going to start off by filling in the solid states for both parties. I mean, obviously, the Democratic Party is still going to have a lot of very solid states. Same thing for the GOP. I am going to classify Utah as being solid. I do think that Mike Lee will still end up defeating Evan McMullen by a pretty significant margin. We do also have a special election in Oklahoma because Jim Inhoff is going to be retiring after this term four years early. So Inhoff is going to make it so that there will be a special election in Oklahoma. And that means that it will still go solid red. Another win for the GOP as, of course, Oklahoma, every single county basically votes for the GOP. And with the states of Iowa and Alaska, this will be 44 for the Republicans, 44 for the Democrats. And these 12 toss-up races are going to be the ones that decide the outcome of the balance of power in the upper chamber for the next two years. So in the state of Iowa, Chuck Grassley, he will be running for re-election, so that's why Iowa is going to be a solid state. However, in these other states, some some states are going to be a lot closer than others, even though all of them are going to be at least slightly competitive. So these solid states, states with over 15% margins for either party, likely being 5 to 15%. Lean will be between 1 and 5%, and anything less than 1% is going to be tilt. So before I move on, I want to take a look at the current numbers for the Democratic Party nationwide. If you look at the generic congressional ballot for the Democratic Party, they are currently down by 2% when compared to the GOP. After Roe v. Wade was overturned, you did see four polls showing the Democratic Party up by significant numbers. And if you look at the latest polls, though, the GOP is still leading once again. So the generic ballot polling has been pretty consistent in the fact that the GOP has been slightly ahead of the Democrats. 2% is not that large of a margin, but you do have to consider that going into the 2020 election, the Democratic Party was ahead by 7.3% nationwide. In 2018, they were ahead by 8.6% nationwide. So the Democratic Party right now is in the worst position that they have been in for almost a decade. The last time the Democratic Party was in such a terrible position was all the way back in the 2014 midterm cycle. Going to 2016, the Democrats were favored because Donald Trump was a very unpopular Republican nominee. So the Democratic Party nationwide, obviously, they're not doing great. And if you look at Joe Biden's approval rating, it does sit at just 30 9.2%. His numbers have not been getting better since Afghanistan in late in early August of last year. I mean, his numbers have just continued to go down, and I don't think they can really go down too much more. If you do compare Biden's numbers to that of Donald Trump's, their approval ratings are pretty similar, and so that does mean that Joe Biden and the Democratic Party still does have a good chance, even though Joe Biden is weighing down a lot of the Democratic candidates. The GOP is still nominating some pretty crappy candidates in a lot of the key races. Really, the closest races the Democrats have to defend at this point are Nevada, Arizona, Georgia, and New Hampshire. And the Republican Party is not doing good with its nominations. They are nominating some pretty unelectable candidates, and the polls are showing that. As well as that, in the state of Pennsylvania, the key race that the GOP has to hold on to Mehmet Oz is a horrible candidate, and Donald Trump endorsing Oz was a mistake. David McCormick would have been a much more electable candidate against Sean Fetterman in the state of Pennsylvania. Of course, we'll be going over these states in just a few moments here. But even though Donald Trump was very unpopular going into his midterm election in 2018, 
he was still able to actually expand on his Senate majority. In 2016, Donald Trump won the presidency with a majority of the Senate, 52-48. After 2018, it was 53-47. And so that does mean that the Democratic Party does have hopes of not just retaining the Senate, but also increasing their majority, even though I do think that increasing the majority this time around for the Democratic Party will be very unlikely. So now we will get into the 12 toss-up races. I'm going to start off with, of course, the likely states. First off, the state of Washington. Yes, I do think Washington is going to end up being likely. Patty Murray is still a relatively strong incumbent. She was elected in the 90s. She is guaranteed at this point to win her re-election. There is no way that she is going to lose. However, if you do look at the polling between her and Tiffany Smiley, Patty, Patty Murray is not leading by a solid margin. She is only up by around 9 to 10 percentage points in these polls on average. So, Yes, Patty Murray is going to win her race, but yes, the race is also going to be a little bit competitive, a little bit more competitive than normal. Patty Murray is not exactly the most popular incumbent senator, but she will still get the job done and win her fifth term in office. Moving on to the state of Florida, Marco Rubio is going to be running for a third term here. He was first elected in 2010, and in 2016, he had a very strong victory over Patrick Murphy, winning the race by a likely margin. This November, he is running against Val Demings. I think Val Demings, clearly, she's going to win the Democratic nomination. But against Marco Rubio, realistically, Val Demings does not stand a chance. Val Demings is a very weak candidate when compared to Marco Rubio. Val Demings is just too much to the left and her history as a police officer is not going to help her. So Mark Rubio right now leads by 9% statewide in the state of Florida. Florida is typically a very close race in 2018. It was actually the closest Senate race with Rick Scott winning by just 0.12%. But in 2018, Bill Nelson, the Democratic incumbent, actually lost his seat. This was really the major win for the Republican Party in the previous midterm elections. And so with this, I mean, the Democratic Party does not stand a chance, especially Especially with such a popular incumbent on the GOP side with Marco Rubio. So Marco Rubio, I have him absolutely winning his re-election and I'm going to classify this state currently as being likely for the GOP. In the state of Missouri, this is another state that the GOP is almost guaranteed to win, even though this race is likely to be potentially very competitive. In 2016, Roy Blunt defeated Jason Cantor. It was a very close race. Roy Blunt did not even get a majority of the vote. And in 2016, this was the same ballot that Donald Trump won Missouri by a solid margin on. So Roy Blunt was not popular, and he will not be running for a third term this November. So in the state of Missouri, currently, the Republicans are really not a expected to nominate anyone at this point. It is still a very contested primary. Eric Green's Vicki Hartzler and Eric Schmidt have all led in the just the two latest polls because Green's and Hartzler were tied in the latest one. Eric Green's is the former governor who resigned in 2016 or 2017 after a sexual misconduct scandal. He is the front runner at this point he has the highest chance of winning but he would also be by far the worst candidate that GOP could nominate in this race if they nominate Eric Greens it would be a very close race Lucas Kuntz and Spencer Totter and Trudy Valentine are all in the running for the Democratic nomination so this has been an absolute mess from both sides in the Missouri primary and if you look at the polling here between Eric Greens and Lucas Kuntz Greens leads by Coons on average by 3.5%. You compare Vicky Hartzler to Lucas Coons, Hartzler leads by 15 0.5% on average. So that just goes to show you how weak of a candidate Eric Greens is at this point in time. So I am going to be safe in classifying Missouri as likely. There's no way these Senate candidates do as well as Donald Trump did in 2016 or 2020, but I don't think this race is going to be overly competitive either. Now, moving on to the state of Colorado, where Michael Bennett is running for his third term as well. Here, Michael Bennett is pretty much going to win his re-election as well. I mean, with all of these likely states, it is... A, you know, these are states that heavily favor one side or the other, but they can still get competitive. And if the challengers do run their campaigns well enough, they can have a very good chance at actually winning. So in the state of Colorado, the Republican primary was just decided. 
Joe Odia defeated Ron Hanks to win the GOP nomination, so it will be Michael Bennett running against Joe Odia for his third term in office. And Michael Bennett led by 13 points over Odia in the latest poll. I don't think he will end up winning by double digits. I think that it will be around 7 to 8 percent, very similar to the margin that he had in 2016 when he defeated Daryl Glenn by six percentage points. So in the state of Colorado, I will also have this state as being likely for the Democratic Party. And the final likely state I have on this map is the state of North Carolina for the Republican Party. Yes, North Carolina can be a very close race, but I don't think that 2022 is when that is going to be the case. In the state of North Carolina, Ted Budd is going to be running for his first term against Sherry Beasley. In 2016, Richard Burr was re-elected by six percentage points, but... He will not be running again this November, and so Ted Budd is now going to be the Republicans' choice to replace um, Richard Burr. On the Democratic side, Sherry Beasley, the former Supreme Court Justice, or the North Carolina Supreme Court Justice, Chief Justice actually of the North Carolina Supreme Court, but Ted Budd is currently a member of the U.S. House. And if you look at the polling between the two, I mean, Ted Budd does lead by a pretty significant advantage, and... I mean, just looking at these numbers here, Sherry Beasley only led in one poll out of all of the polls that have been released so far in this race. And not just that, if you do look at the polls in the state of North Carolina, on average, 530 it has Bud up 2.4%. That is because of that one poll where Beasley led by four points. But if you look at the 2020 race where Cal Cunningham was challenging Tom Tillis, Cal Cunningham led in every single poll going into the election in November of 2020, and he's still end up losing to Tom Tillis. The polling numbers in North Carolina have not been very accurate. They were not accurate on the presidential level either, and they were not very accurate in 2016 with Richard Burr against Deborah Ross as well. So in the state of North Carolina, I think that right now the GOP does have a significant advantage in this race. Ted Budd is one of the better candidates that the GOP has nominated. Objectively, he is a good candidate to win a statewide race in a state like North Carolina. And so that is why I have North Carolina currently as likely for the Republicans. And moving on to the lean states we have on this map, I will categorize Ohio as being lean. Trump could only win this state by 8%. I don't think J.D. Vance is going to do as well as Donald Trump. Of course, there is no incumbent in this race as well. J.D. Vance will be running against Tim Ryan, the Democratic nominee. Tim Ryan is a much better nominee, and if you do look at the polling that has been done for the race in Ohio, Tim Ryan has actually led over J.D. Vance in many of the polls that have been put out between the two. And so right now, I do think that J.D. Vance will make this race very competitive. He is a pretty mediocre nominee. Tim Ryan is much better on the Democratic side. So right now, I have the state of Ohio as being lean for the Republicans. And so we have now six races left, and truly, these are the six races that are going to matter the most. Yes, I think Ohio will be a little bit closer, but the Democratic Party has no realistic chance of winning. Yes, the race may be under 5%, but that's because that is 5% really is the lowest that a race in Ohio really can go for the GOP at this point in time. So these six races really are the ones that are going to matter the most. So I'm going to start off with the state of Wisconsin. In the state of Wisconsin, currently Ron Johnson is running for a third term. He is not in the best position at this point. On the Democratic side, the primary is still a toss-up. Mandela Barnes is the current frontrunner, though, but Alex Lazary still has significant support. But in the end, I do think Mandela Barnes is going to end up on top. And if you look at the numbers here between Mandela Barnes and Ron Johnson, Barnes led by three points according to the latest poll released just earlier last month. And this was the only poll that's been released anytime recently in the state of Wisconsin. So... Yes, Ron Johnson is actually behind in the polling, but I do think that he will still end up on top. He is still a third-time incumbent in a state that the Democratic Party's grip is loosening very significantly over the last couple of years. The state of Wisconsin is not like it was before. There was an almost 30-year streak where it voted for Republicans on the presidential level, but that streak was, of course, ended by Donald Trump. In 2020, Joe Biden did win the state back, but he actually won Wisconsin by a smaller margin than Trump did in 2016. So, state of Wisconsin right now, the GOP definitely has a clear advantage in. In the state of New Hampshire, this is a race that I will be giving to the Democrats. I do think that Maggie Hassan is going to win her re-election. In 2016, this was the closest Senate race. Maggie Hassan defeated Kelly Ayotte, the Republican incumbent, by just a little bit over 1,000 votes. So, in 2016, this was 
I mean, the closest a race could get. And in this year, though, I do think that Maggie San is going to win her re-election. Chuck Morris, Donald Bulldo, both of the potential GOP nominees, are down by 4% according to the polling averages against Maggie Hassan. It's not just the polling, it's the fact that Maggie Hassan has led in every single poll that has been released. There's only one that shows Chuck Morris ahead of Maggie Hassan, but at this point in time, Maggie Hassan is still expected to win her re-election. She was able to defeat a Republican incumbent last time in a year where the GOP did very well in New Hampshire. Donald Trump almost won New Hampshire on the presidential level, so right now I am going to give New Hampshire to the Democratic Party. And so moving on now to the really the closest races at this point, these are really the four races that are going to be the absolute closest if you even exclude these two races in Wisconsin and North Carolina. Starting off with the race in Pennsylvania where Pat Toomey is going to be retiring. In 2022, it will be Mehmet Oz versus John Fetterman. We've talked about this race a lot. I mean, as of right now, the Democratic Party has a clear advantage in this election. John Fetterman is led by significant margins over Mehmet Oz in the three latest polls released just from last month. And we will get more polling data. There will be a lot of polling for this race. This is a major race. This is the only race the Democratic Party has any significant chance at flipping. So right now, I do think that John Fetterman will defeat Mehmet Oz, not even by a tilt margin. I think that it will be lean. Of course, Bob Casey in 2018 defeated Lou Barletta by 13%. So right now, I do think the Democratic Party with John Fetterman can do pretty well here. I don't think it's obviously going to be over 5%. That's very unlikely, but obviously I do think that John Fetterman is going to be able to win by a little bit over just one percentage point. In the state of Arizona, Mark Kelly is going to be running for his first full term in office after being elected in the 2020 special election. This time, it will not be Martha McSally. The Republicans are not going to put it up for a third time after losing to both Kelly and Kirsten Sinema. But currently, Blake Masters is expected to win the GOP nomination after getting the endorsement of Donald Trump. Blake Masters is one of the stronger Republican candidates, even though he is doing pretty terribly against Mark Kelly in the polling so far. But that's because this primary race has not consolidated for the GOP yet. The primary is not in over a month. Masters is very likely to win it, but as of right now, Mark Kelly is still doing relatively well against the Republican frontrunner. So I do believe that Mark Kelly is going to end up winning his re-election at this point in time. He is still one of the strongest Democratic incumbents in the country. And now we have the two final states with 49 on both sides. I'm going to start off with the state of Nevada. I am going to give Nevada to the Republican Party. Catherine Cortez Masto, I do think, is going to lose her re-election, even though it will be a very slight margin. Adam Luxalt was the 2018 GOP nominee for the governorship. He, of course, lost to Steve Sisolak, but in 2022, Catherine Cortez Masto is just not as significant of a senator, nor as well-known and as popular as the other Democratic incumbents in states like New Hampshire, Arizona, or Georgia. And yes, abortion is going to be a big issue. Adam Luxalt does very much support and has been very vocal in his support of Roe v. Wade being overturned. That is going to hurt him. But I mean, just a couple of months ago, this was almost a shoe-in for Adam Luxalt. Catherine Cortez Masto was in a very weak position. Even though her polling numbers are looking good right now, uh, it's really unlikely that she's going to end up winning her re-election. I think that we're just going to have to see what happens in this race, but it is still the state of Nevada, a state that is not trending well for the Democratic Party. They have barely been able to hold on to it in the last couple of elections, and with Cortez Masto only running for her second term, she has only served one term in the Senate so far. She is still very vulnerable going into this race. So right now, I do think that Adam Luxalt has a very slight advantage in the race in Nevada. And finally, in the state of Georgia, this is the final race that we will be going over. And so in the state of Georgia, Raffle Warnock will be running for his first full term as well against Herschel Walker. Herschel Walker is a terrible nominee. I mean, I've gone over this so many times. He just says so many nonsensical things. He has so many positions that are not popular in his state, a state that is very moderate at this point in time, the state of Georgia. And so Herschel Walker is losing support very quickly. If you look at the polling average in the state of Georgia, you will see that Herschel Walker's numbers have been dropping more and more as this election cycle has gone on. Herschel Walker has not led in a single poll since early April of this year. And a 
in a poll funded by his very own campaign showed both candidates even, and these types of polls are supposed to show the candidate up significantly more. So, Raphael Warnock is in a good position to win his re-election, and so that is why I'm going to classify the state of Georgia as being tilt for the Democrats. So this will end up being 50-50. The Democrats maintain control with Kamala Harris as the vice president. This is my updated 2022 Senate prediction for the month of July. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure you like it down below if you enjoyed it. Comment what you feel about this map. Subscribe to my channel if you have not, and I will see you guys in the next video.